Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Clooney. I work on the marketing team here at OnQ. And for those of you who haven't met OnQ yet, we are an all-in-one moving software company. We provide software and a booking service for the moving industry. Uh, and one of the things that we hear all the time from customers uh, that come to us is they are looking for more leads, uh, which, uh, which makes sense. Leads are the lifeblood of any sort of moving company. And so that's why I'm really excited to, to host this webinar today with one of our partners, Nick from Declare Media. Uh, Nick and his team work with moving companies all the time to help them grow. And one of the topics uh, that they are specialized in is around Google and Google Ads. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nick. Uh, the, what, where the format this is pretty informal. Nick is going to go through a presentation and then we'll have time, of course, for Q&A at the end. Uh, so if you're familiar with how Zoom works, there's a button at the bottom that says Q&A. Hopefully you all see it. Feel free to jump on that uh, at, at any point, but we'll probably take more questions at the end. And one of the questions that we always get with our webinars is, is this recording going to be shared after? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. So you will uh, get a copy of this for attending and then we'll also be sharing it on our social media. So with that, uh, again, thanks everyone for joining and I'm now gonna turn it over to Nick. I appreciate that uh, on queue team, Matt and Thomas and uh, everyone else, thanks for having me. And Obviously, all the attendees, thanks so much for making the time out of your busy days to hop on here. Um, so yeah, really high level. I just want to go through uh, how Google Ads could help your moving company generate more leads. And hopefully you walk away uh, from this with some tools and tips to better understand the digital landscape. So who am I and why should you listen to me? My name is Nick Fatucci. I'm the founder of Declare Media, and we're a Google certified partner. My team and I help moving business owners triple their sales through getting them high quality and consistent leads from Google Ads each month. I worked for a big agency that served thousands of home service customers for five years. Uh, in that time, I learned a lot about Google Ads and how to make it work well for home service companies. Obviously, uh, leads and phone calls and form submissions, whatever form of a lead, are the lifeblood of uh, businesses like ours. Um, so learned a lot there. And uh, right at the start of COVID, I actually left that agency and niched down with a specific focus on the moving industry. Oh, I got it. My slides were a little bit out of order there. Uh, here's me and a couple of folks actually at a, at a recent uh, moving conference. But so since then, I uh, have delivered countless marketing audits and have helped hundreds of moving companies with their Google ads within the US and Canada. Many of them go from uh, doing the wrong things online to totally dominating their local market, especially on Google Ads. So you're in the right place to get the latest information on Google Ads and how it relates to your moving company. And again, the purpose of today's presentation is not to pitch you. Uh, actually, some of you are probably ready customers. And uh, we've invited you here to talk shop and hopefully learn a thing or two about Google Ads and how that fits into your marketing strategy. Uh, what we'll cover today, the search results landscape, why Google Ads is key to unlimited scalability of lead flow for your moving company, Google Ads strategies that work best, how to structure your Google Ads campaigns, and the importance of lead tracking. So marketing is ever-changing. Uh, how we get leads is different than it once was, and obviously it's changing rapidly. Uh, we as business owners and advertisers have to embrace and change with it. Google, Bing, and the powers that be are constantly changing and introducing new ad products, adjusting algorithms, and much more. If we wanna survive and thrive, we must stay at the forefront of these changes. So here's a picture of what a search results page looks like. And uh, I know probably you're, you're wondering, what is he talking about? Uh, let me explain. Um, Google local service ads at the top, Google ads right below that, organic search for results finally show at the bottom. So the page itself above the fold is almost entirely made up of paid advertising. What does that mean? Let's uh, take an actual look at an example. So this search here is for a moving company near me keyword. And again, a lot of the page, I actually had to zoom out for this screenshot in order to finally get an organic search result to show at the bottom there. So this is zoomed out at about 80%. Uh, 
Um, but basically what we have here is Google local service or Google guaranteed ads at the top. Right below that are Google ads, uh, once known as Google AdWords. Beneath that is a Google map ad. And then finally the organic map results and the organic search results below that. So the whole point here is you need to be playing in the paid ads arena or you will be losing out on valuable leads to your competitors. We must be comfortable with the fact that Google is gonna get their take. Some folks for whatever reason will definitely scroll beyond the ads and um, make their way to the organic section and call you from there if you're showing there and that's great. But if you wanna scale and you're looking for high volume uh, of leads, you need to be showing in the paid ad section. Uh, part of, you know, it sort of sounds like there's a lot of uh, negatives there, but obviously with that comes some positive and that's the amount of leads and the access to advertising um, capabilities that we have. There's, right now we have the most powerful of advertising that's pretty much ever existed. We've never been able to reach audiences uh, that we've been able to reach we can pre precisely target users who fit within our ideal customer persona. Not only can we, can we target them based on the actual search term or keyword that they're using, but we can layer in different types of audiences and whether or not they're in market for moving or maybe some closely related in market audiences to better get after these folks that are looking for a moving company. And remember Google's priority is, is really not to just steal your money, as uh, some folks often say. Their, their, their priority is matching a searcher with the best possible solution for what that query is. So if, if we want to be at the opposite end of that, then uh, we definitely need to know a thing or two about Google ads, Google local service ads, and obviously even the organic space below that. So the ever-changing digital landscape creates a unique opportunity for us as marketing people. Uh, as I mentioned, we've gotten tons of tools to target the exact customer persona that we want. Most Google Ads campaigns fail for uh, not having a strong call to action, uh, sending traffic to a poorly designed website or landing page, and uh, not structuring a Google Ads account properly. I just want to take a quick step back. Actually, before even spending any of our hard-earned money on leads, we should really make sure these three things are on point. So uh, we need a great website, reputation, and sales process. These things really matter. Does your website include real pictures of your team, trucks, office, and warehouse? Crews on the job and packing and doing packing and moving. We, we really can't skimp out on this. I know a lot of folks, when I make searches or I talk to prospects, they're using stock images. Stock images stand out so easily uh, for a customer that's look or a potential customer that's looking for a moving company, and it's a real turnoff. I think uh, the, the first place to look is, uh, is getting this stuff in line and, and making sure that you know, your website looks on point and conveys the overall brand image that you're trying to present. Um, if budget is tight, a simple way to get photos shot is just find a local college student, have them take photos of the crew being dispatched at the shop and on the move. I don't figure it'll be a half a day or a full day, depending on how many photos you want, but you're going to be able to use these photos for the website, for social media, for direct mail, and much more than that. Probably even training videos or training clips as well. It's worth the investment. And if budget is really, really tight, uh, take a look at what some companies are doing that are, that are doing great photography and just get out your iPhone and try to imitate uh, some of those photos and angles that they're using. Reputation. Obviously this is uh, really big as well. And it's a uh, sort of alley-oop for the rest of the marketing activities that uh, you may be doing. If someone makes a search for a moving company and they find you after clicking on one of your ads and you have a three-star rating, you're probably going to have a difficult time booking them. So reputation plays a big role in how well uh, you're going to be able to do in terms of booking folks who call you from your ads. Your sales process. Uh, well, if you are a customer of OnQ, you have this already dialed in, but uh, something that you need to really consider and uh, make sure it's, it's set up properly. Follow-ups, um, just the right scripts, everything like that is really important. Uh, again, we don't want to spend money on leads if, if sales process, reputation, and website are not properly set up. 
Each of these facets are foundation for your marketing flywheel. Once these are set, then let's turn on paid ads and measure results and tweak the above as needed. While Google, why Google Ads should be part of your marketing strategy. For one, you could start showing up quickly. You could show up exactly when and where your customer is looking. And it's possible to scale as high as you want, as much as your market allows for it. So you could start showing up quickly, meaning we could literally turn on an ad campaign. And there's a slight learning phase, about five or so days within Google system, and then a little bit of a ramp up period beyond that. But from there, you could start receiving phone calls very quickly as a new company or new company to the advertising space in Google ads. We could show up exactly when and where your customer is looking, meaning we could target specifically the zip codes that you want to target and exclude those that you don't want to target. We could target a zip code and exclude a neighboring zip code if you don't want to show in a specific area. We could obviously also show messaging that's, uh, that's customized to that type of search, right? And we'll get a little bit more into that as I go through the slides here. And in terms of scalability, we could scale as high as you want, right? The market is, uh, is as big as the market is. And if there's opportunity to get more impression share, we could continue spending more money and obviously getting more leads for as, as high as that market allows for it. Obviously, a bigger city, there's going to be more search volume. A smaller, more tertiary area or a tier three city, tier two city, there's going to be a little bit less volume there. All things equal. So Google Ads account structure. Uh, Google Ads account breaks down to uh, campaigns, ad groups, and keywords and ads. Obviously, there's a lot more than that. There's different levers to pull inside of each of these, but this is just the basic hierarchy. So within campaigns, we could actually um, control the budget and location targeting. And then inside of each of those campaigns are ad groups. Ad groups should be looked at as uh, sort of themes for different services. So your keywords for a specific service will be themed or broken out into each of the respective ad groups. For example, you don't want relocation related keywords inside of a moving company ad group. The ad group that speaks about relocation or relocation services will have keywords and ad copy that speaks to relocation and relocation services. Whereas uh, an ad group that has something as general as moving company will have keywords and ads that speak to moving company keywords. So that when a searcher makes a search for a moving company, they'll see that ad copy uh, that says moving company. And it sort of mirrors what that search was so that we could raise our quality score and get a, you know, just get a better answer for those folks and increase our chances of converting that lead. First of all, converting that click into a lead. And then secondly, converting that lead into a customer. Uh, geo appended keywords are definitely part of this as well. And when I say geo appended keywords, these are keywords that will have a uh, town or a city name appended to them. So figure uh, Springfield, the town of Springfield, maybe it's movers in Springfield. Inside of that ad group, that's sort of the only variation of keywords we may target, all related to the Springfield search. So obviously the ad copy inside of that ad group will be related to Springfield as well, not the neighboring town, uh, Plainview, right? We want to speak to each of the towns as the searcher is searching them. So this all helps with conversion rate, like I mentioned, and um, just ups the opportunity and ups the chances of actually getting that lead on the phone. Uh, lead tracking. This is a huge one. And uh, I see countless business owners completely disregard this just because maybe they don't quite understand it or it wasn't set up uh, correctly from the start or maybe the agency or, or freelancer they're working with hasn't properly set it up. But as a local business, uh, especially a service-based business, we're going to want to track phone calls, contact forms, live chats, and possibly even scheduling confirmations if you have that uh, set up on your website. Any way that a customer could get in touch with you is something we need to be tracking. Um, I like to handle phone call tracking uh, with and, and reporting with a, a third-party software. And the beauty of this is we could track down to the keyword that somebody searches uh, what exactly that search was in order for that phone call or form to happen. And that information all gets uploaded back into Google Ads. And then, uh, and then 
myself and the team is able to make um, uh, intelligent decisions based on that information. So it's powerful. It helps with getting the campaigns to perform more strongly over time. And then beyond that, obviously, from a reporting standpoint, you're able to see exactly what is coming from Google Ads. And uh, obviously, if you want to continue scaling, you can make that decision to continue scaling as long as you're able to fulfill the work. Or you could stay where you're at, but at least know what the, what the sort of return looks like. So accurate lead tracking is going to allow us to properly measure lead volume, cost per lead, and uh, even return on ad spend in some cases. Here's a uh, just a actually a quick um, a quick little snippet of a customer. So this is a customer from the, the top portion there with the green uh, border around it. This is a customer from back in February 2022. They were not on board with us at that time. Uh, they were not on board with us until May. But their spend through February was 600 bucks. March almost a thousand. April pushing towards 2,000. They signed on with us in May. And uh, obviously you could see at that point, we got lead tracking properly configured and they decided to spend uh, quite a bit more at that point in time. You know, typically we don't work with uh, customers that spend below a thousand. So we were able to get them to spend a bit more and just explain the importance of spending more just because it allows for more data to come in. So these folks uh, actually took away some money they were spending on Yelp and uh, brought it over to Google ads in May. And you could see their cost per lead uh, is just incredibly low. Uh, this is actually in Texas, uh, right outside the, da the Dallas area. Uh, incredibly low cost per lead. Uh, stayed that way uh, for a little bit, inched up a little bit more as we pushed into summer, uh, just naturally, right? This is an auction. So there's just going to be more players that are in that auction uh, come summer during the busy months. So it's, it's possible to see cost per lead inch up a bit like that. But still, the return and revenue gotten from Google ads. I mean, it's almost unmatchable, uh, except for obviously referral-based business, but these guys have done an awesome job. And I've uh, included actually a couple of screenshots within the account there, just of, of what the metrics look like inside the system, just to show you uh, inside these two campaigns specifically. But yeah, so having everything dialed in from a website, uh, reputation and sales process standpoint, and then looking forward and, and getting Google ads set up properly on top of that foundation. These are the sort of results that uh, you could imagine. Obviously, this is going to vary based on market, but uh, certainly it's, it's a possibility to, to get results like this in your market as well. Just a couple of shout outs here from uh, current clients. And uh, that, that's all I've got for today in terms of the slides, but I'm happy to take any questions and respond to those. And obviously, if, if you didn't get to ask a question or if you're watching the recording of this and you have a question in the future, don't hesitate to reach out to me, nick at getdeclare.com. It's uh, in the slide here. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you. Obviously, uh, a lot of these questions are gonna be market specific beyond just uh, specific to your moving company itself. So if you do have questions and it's something we need to hop on the phone about, I'm happy to hop on the phone and chat through it with you. Uh, that's great. Awesome, Nick. Thanks so much. I love your idea too about just getting scrappy with the, the, the fundamentals that you need, even like around photos. It's just looking what your competitors are doing and seeing if you can mimic some of those shots in your own. I mean, it doesn't have to be overly fancy to get a really good quality result. So I, th I, I thought that was a great idea. Um, awesome. All right, so um, we have time for questions. And so for folks who have been on Zooms before, there's a button at the bottom called Q&A. Feel free to tap that and, and type in a question there if you have one. Um, so I'll give um, folks uh, a little bit of time to, to do that. And as I said, uh, if you're watching this, we'll be sending it out later. So you don't have to worry about capturing all of the great content that Nick provided. Just take a look and see if there are any sort of questions. Not just yet, but maybe one of the questions I know people might be asking is, is there a minimum amount of spend that you need to uh, put into an ads campaign before you get before you get started? Like if I'm just starting out, how much do I need to invest right away? Yeah, awesome question. Thanks, Matt. I, I, it's definitely a question I get often uh, when speaking to prospects. 
typically it's going to depend on the market obviously and it's going to depend even beyond that how many trucks and how much work you could actually handle but um i like to see folks really start with you know 1500 or so maybe even 2000 if possible if you're in a really competitive market i think you need to up that to closer to 3000 and higher but the beauty of this stuff like i said is it's completely trackable so we're going to be able to make adjustments pretty much on the dime uh, in terms of maybe creeping down on spend if we have to, keeping it where it's at, or if you're liking what you're seeing and things are working well very quickly off the bat, I mean, we could we could obviously increase from there as well. But part of why uh, we need a little bit of an investment like that to start is it's average out across the month. So if we're running ads 30 days in a month, we, we need enough spend to have that daily budget uh, be sufficient to get data into the account to be able to make those intelligent decisions, to be able to report those uh, those metrics to you. And then from there, obviously, for you to field those leads. So, you know, I think a good starting point is about 1,500, uh, all things equal. Okay, great. Well, we got now we've got a bunch of questions. Awesome. So um, I'm going to, uh, hopefully, I'm going to pick uh, just one. At, um, one question we got was, which keywords do you recommend using? Yeah, great question. Um, so, I, I'd break this down a bit and it's going to, you're going to want a, a handful of keywords in each ad group. So I, I would put no more than about 10 or so keywords within each ad group and break them down based on your services. So if your services are moving, packing, labor only, maybe some long distance, um, you're going to want ad groups for moving related searches and maybe general moving related searches. That's the mover near me stuff, moving companies near me, moving services near me and even consider breaking each of those down into their own ad groups and getting variations of that stuff within each ad group. So about 10 or so keywords per ad group. And then obviously the packing related keywords, you know, same thing there. General packing related keywords could be inside of the packing ad group. And then I'd get, I'd get keywords set up for uh, geo appended stuff, right? And these are towns that you're servicing in your area or city names that you're servicing in your area, maybe even zip codes that you're servicing. Break that down within each of the ad groups as well. And the longer tail keywords are, could be great as well. When I say longer tail, these are going to be searches that are maybe um, best moving company, uh, Springfield, uh, Illinois, something like that, right? It's a little bit longer than a short general keyword, but still might actually have enough search volume to show your ads to and might even in some cases be uh, cheaper. So definitely worth uh, really expanding on some of these things between the general searches or the general keywords and the long tail keywords. Okay, great. Um, we have another question from Dan who says, can you give us an example of a great ad versus one that doesn't work? Have you seen any great um, kind of Google ads in your experience or done one yourself maybe? <laughs> yeah, good, good question. Um, I, I think a bad ad is going to really fit in with all of the other ads that you're competing with. So if you're trying to get ideas for crafting your message and your ad, don't get those ideas from making searches within your market that you're searching in. And for one, that's a bad idea because you're just going to have the same ad copy as your competitors. And, you know, that'd be foolish. Uh, and for, for two beyond that, it's just, it's not going to perform as well if, if the ad copy is the same as everybody's ad copy. I think a good ad is going to have some sort of strong call to action. If you do have some sort of promotional offer, uh, or some sort of limited time offer, I think it's worth displaying there as well. Obviously this is gonna depend on the time of year. It's gonna depend on a lot of things. I know you, you, you don't really wanna, you don't wanna sort of uh, race to the bottom on pricing or anything like that. So you wanna convey the message in a way that it's not sounding like you're just giving away discount moves. But there's a way to do to do this without uh, without making it seem that like that. I think you kind of got to sort of use the same ideas and 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 script that you might uh, use when you're chatting with somebody on the phone and you're trying to you're trying to feel that call or pitch them in some way, right? Kind of take that messaging and put it into short form inside of the Google Ads uh, ad copy. Cool. All right, great. We've got two more, which is just about enough time. But if anyone wants to sneak in a last minute question, we'll try to get that in before we wrap up. Uh, one very specific question. Do you know how many moving companies you work with in Mississauga, uh, Ontario, Canada? Do you work with any Canadian companies? 
Yeah, yes. Uh, work with some uh, Canadian companies, uh, one sort of in that area. Okay, great. All right. And then the last question we got was, how user-friendly is Google Ads for someone who doesn't have a lot of advertising experience? That's a good question. Great question. There is an out-of-the-box um, Google Ads product, and it, it really would be a smart uh, campaign that could be set up inside of Google Ads. It's not going to give you all of the settings and features that uh, the they call it the expert uh, level has, but uh, it's it could be good to start there. Though um, I keep a close eye on it and not not necessarily run it unless you're tracking, like I had mentioned earlier, is completely set up properly. If you set it up and you don't have tracking in place, you're not going to know if it's working well. So it's definitely worth at least getting the tracking properly configured and then consider trying one of those smart campaigns. Or like I said, feel free to email me and I'll be happy to maybe walk you through, um, you know, kind of what that would look like to get started. And if I could give you a hand and, and sort of, I don't know, hold your hand in some sense to uh, get it running on your own, I'd be happy to chat with you. Awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, I think uh, in the comment from Dan is it's extremely complicated. Yeah, I, I think it can be a bit intimidating for for new fo folks out of the gate, for sure. So um, cool. I think we have one other question. Like if I, I guess one of the thoughts is like, okay, I'm doing everything. I, I know what I'm doing, but I'm still not number one on the, on the result on the top of the page. I'm not the top of the mountain that you showed earlier. Why is that? What, are, what could be some reasons behind that? Thanks, Matt. Yeah, great question. So we, we actually probably don't want to be uh, showing in the top position in that first position. Typically, that means that we're spending quite a bit of money for that actual uh, for that actual search and that click itself. Um, it's a, it's sort of a balance uh, between showing in that vanity spot and then showing in you know the second or third position where we may actually end up paying a little bit less for a click, but still yielding clicks and obviously phone calls and form submissions and just leads in a hole beyond that. So. Um, if you're, if you're not showing at all, obviously that's an issue and we need, you know, we need to look at that and figure out why. And maybe there's some settings that are not properly configured inside the account. But if, you, if you're just concerned with showing in that vanity position, I definitely would warn you to, uh, to not be so concerned about that. Don't continue searching for yourself or anything like that. Just work on having that balance between showing in the, let's say second or third position and uh, not overspending on uh, clicks. Yeah, definitely a fine line. You want to be there, but not 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 go overboard and, and spend where you don't have to. Well, that's great. Well, Nick, thank you so much on behalf of OnQ and our customers uh, and folks that we've worked with in the past. I think it's been a really great session. Uh, really appreciate your time. As I said, for, for everyone that's registered for this, we'll be sure and get you a copy of, uh, of the presentation. Uh, Nick, anything you want to share with anyone while we wrap up? I... Look, like I said, I mean, it's definitely an ever-changing landscape. Uh, marketing in general is tough and figuring out where to place your dollars is, it, it's not easy. Um, I'm not one of those people that says throw every dollar at Google Ads. I think you need to sort of be resilient and have you know different marketing channels that you're trying and you know keeping running and tweaking and, and making those adjustments to get it to work. And if it's not, obviously then add more dollars to the thing that is working. So uh, look, don't go all in on Google ads, keep it, uh, keep it as resilient as possible. And if you have any questions specifically about your business and your market, uh, definitely don't hesitate to reach out, nick at getdeclare.com. And uh, thanks for making the time and hopping on here on cue. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Nick. And thanks everyone. Have a good rest of your week. Thanks again for joining us. Take care.